literally have dabbled across platforms. Yeah. You've been a VJ, yeah. an RJ, you acted in movies. Yeah. Gynecologist, no one talks about this but it's true. There are many stars. <laughs> you, you've been... <laughs> Gymnast. <laughs> host for television and online yeah. shows and you uh, hosted a you know a plethora of uh, on stage gigs and events yeah how how do you manage so much so first of all uh, primarily because in in all honesty today unless you're super lucky you can't just do one thing in the media yeah. which is why everybody is doing everything uh, so you I, I, uh, so, and, and anyway in MTV the whole network was run by nine people there were nine VJs doing everything mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the training was really fast okay. and it was brutal and uh, it was there nowadays I sign, find there's, there's a teleprompter and there are people to help you out yeah. and those days they should just give us a mic and say say something yeah. and I'm like I, I don't know what to say. so I was really awkward man mm -hmm. I looked like someone was having a sort of an epileptic fit on camera <laughs> like I couldn't I couldn't basically I couldn't balance my head while talking into a mic so it was like that was just that, that was my aim in life to somehow stand straight okay and not hunch I looked like like one of those you know those bent trees <laughs> <laughs> that lost interest in living for like first the first two years okay. and uh, but they sort of kept me they said he's young we you know sure. and then um the spoof generation. So I, I started really enjoying live. Okay. There's a really nice feeling in interacting with people and audience. The audience are far more gracious than people give them credit for. Uh, and I, st I started loving it. I really started enjoying it. Uh, till it became, I became more comfortable on stage than actually being on in, in real life. In real life, I, and it affected me. Mm. So by the time I was 24, I had done about 400 shows. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And f I was in a serious issue situation because I used to talk to people in my drawing rooms like I'd meet old friends and I'd be like hey <laughs> so how's it going good I was like a weirdo man I used to do okay. links rather than actually have you know oh, we're breaking up yeah. we're breaking up uh, so yeah but hmm. I, I learned a lot really really fast and it was primarily just through like a hmm. lot of bad good uh, weird work and uh, I think people take a little time to get used to you and then the spoof time came and we started doing spoofs so I think it was also out of pure necessity that it, it all just started happening but how come uh, you get gravitated more towards comedy how how did it become your forte I mean is it uh, again by I, chance it's a or tricky, uh, uh, because it is a tricky uh, genre to so I don't know man you know it's a re so there's another part of me which I really believe would be, uh, I wouldn't say the word serious. Okay. Because, uh, but definitely someone who, so the whole slipping on the banana peel situation hmm. makes me laugh, but I don't feel like really doing it personally. Okay. So yeah, so I feel that I gravitated towards comedy primarily because I always was weird and funny. Hmm. I always found everything trivial. I really have. I mean, I've. I've always found life a little weird. I find it worth living through comedy. Okay. I find every other process exhausting. Okay. It's just like that for me. Uh, and I think that in MTV at that point in time also, and, and India at that point in time, mm. comedy was really getting a boost. Yeah. Uh, hosts were getting a lot of attention. You had a lot of new people coming in. Uh, and I think I started enjoying it. And okay. I must say that in those 10 years, MTV was doing very well. And there was a genuine... Uh, uh, freedom of creativity so you uh, you tell your boss that I want to do a show where I juggle and I bang into a wall and that's what I do for four minutes and you be like hmm why not okay so it was great yeah. and I think I started tilting toward that mm. aspect mm. of my life and okay. uh, and it just happened and then I found spoofing mm. where not being myself and playing a character very very interesting you could say so much more <laughs> Every artist in their career has that one indelible moment where they know that, you know, they're here to stay. Hmm. What was yours? I think here to stay hmm. happened for me the day I, got, uh, since there was a show called Fully Faltu, hmm. which was where MTV decided, let's take our culture okay. and let's take ads and let's take film stars and let's spoof the life out of them. Okay. And the minute I got into that, hmm. uh, I, I, I saw a dramatic difference. I mean, suddenly people started reacting to you differently. So basically, I realized if I'm not myself, people like me. So I was like, <laughs> okay, great. Just, just don't be yourself. You're too confusing. Okay. Uh, and uh, that point, I think I was, I, I realized, all right, I'm here to, 
I'm here to stay. This is something I can do. This is mm. something I really do like. Sure. And um, and which other profession do you really get the opportunity to be in, where normal people meet you and you meet the best side of them? Mm. You're very lucky to be because uh, in the comedy business you're not mm. too cool. Yeah. So people can chat with you. I like people. I like hearing their stories. I like chatting with them. Uh, so that was really nice, mm. and uh, I think that during the spoof time, with the with, with the advent of fully faltu and then simi gire baal and all that, I thought I was here to stay for uh, six months. I think people should just do whatever they feel like doing, and I love that someone's checking their phone while I'm doing a show, because then I can go to that person, maybe read the message. You know, we are like that, yeah. It's human behavior, yeah.